In this lesson, we'll be adding the scale animation for the pie pieces. Okay, so what I'd like to do is first scrub all the way past these keyframes and figure out the way that I want the scale to look. So I actually think that having this piece 43 scaled up the largest is going to look the best since it's on this far left. And I really like this angle. I think I'm going to pursue that once we start getting our camera involved. So with 43 selected, I'll just go into my coordinates and let's come in here and just make this a little bit bigger. Let's try a 1.5 and just see how that looks. Okay, so way, way bigger than we probably need for it to be. However, um, in the category of how big it's happening here in the Z, I don't really think that that is kind of overdoing it. So what we may decide to do is to still give it a scale animation, but not try to do the whole thing through scale. So if I take these back down to one, we can achieve the same look by simply going in to the object tab of 43 and increasing the radius and height very slightly. So this gives us a little bit more control than that scale property was. Okay, and then let's leave the two and the one as they are, and then we'll just take the 54 down a little bit. Okay, so pretty even measurements, and you can see how now those are kind of fitting into each other. We've got sort of this bigger middle section, and then a smaller outer section, and a largest outer section on the other side. Now, if you want to add more contrast between these, you could totally do that. Um, and I would say you would just want to be careful of not making anything too small so that it doesn't feel like it belongs here anymore. So taking that down to a 68 and that down to a 21 I think is still working and going over to the 43 and making this even larger and taller. So I think it's still looking pretty good. It might be starting to get a little bit too large. So it's totally up to you how far you want to take that kind of thing. Okay, so overall I think that's working pretty well for me where that is now. Um, there might be a little bit too much discrepancy in the heights, so I may want to go back into 43, take the height down a little bit, go back over to 54, take the height up a little bit, just so the thickness isn't so different. And I think that looks pretty good. So now we scrub backwards, you can kind of see what that does. Really, really cool. And I think what we can do is just add a little bit of a scale animation to these as they animate on. So now the fact that we haven't used our scale property to get those offsets is going to allow us to have a much more easy and streamlined way of doing this. So over about this many frames, just about five frames is how fast I want this to happen. So I'm just going to go to frame 5 here on 54 since it starts on uh, frame 0 and key the X, Y, and Z. Then I'm going to move backwards to 0 and take them all down to 0. And we'll key again by control clicking. So now you can see how that comes from nothing kind of into something and on around. Now if you want that scale to last a little bit longer, you absolutely could go in here and make sure that you're grabbing those scale keys and pull that forward a little bit. So maybe it doesn't get so big so fast. It gives it a little bit more time to continue that on. So whatever you decide, make it consistent. So we're giving that about eight frames it looks like. So what I'll do then is move on to the 2%. Same thing. We'll come in here eight frames later and key that at one, then go back to the first frame and turn it down to zero. And this serves a couple of purposes. It just allows us to 
have a slightly more interesting animation as well as something that's not so jarring. So you can see how that just really kind of pops on. Whereas if we come in here to the 43 and we set our ones there, then going back and changing them to zero, we notice such a big difference in how much smoother that looks. Very nice. And then we'll just finish up with our 1%. Again, going eight frames in. Keying that full scale. And then taking everything down to zero. And you really quickly have done the same thing that a display tag would have done only in a little bit more interesting kind of a way. So I think that's always a better way to do it if you can come up with something like that. Okay, so now that we've added the scale animation for our pie pieces, I want to deal with that text. So we've got this text that's kind of living inside of everything right now. And I, instead of just kind of putting it on top of the graph, I'd actually like to cut it out so we have a little bit of an indention in our pieces of our graph. Um, so I'll show you how to use what's called a bool to do that in the next lesson.